Uh, why don't we move into our session. We're officially reconvened from yesterday afternoon. Welcome all the regents back, all the staff and all the uh, press. Can everybody in the audience hear us well enough or are we too loud? Everybody's good? All right. Uh, good morning to everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's an unusual event, but maybe not the final time we have a meeting on Saturday. Um, we're going to be very brief this morning with some reports from committee chairman. We, I anticipate a motion to move into executive session where we will be for a number of hours. So for the benefit of the press, we don't want you all sitting around just waiting on our uh, whim. We will contact you with a kind of a target time uh, that will be coming out of executive session, but I've advised the regents that uh, just in a very loose sense, I anticipate we'll be out and back into open session around 2.30. So if you want to give uh, Dr. Purcell a number where she can text you and let you know if that's accurate or inaccurate, we'd be happy to accommodate you. All right. Are there any questions or comments before we get into uh, chair reports this morning and then the executive session? Regents, anybody? Okay, why don't we start with uh, Regent Albert on facilities and properties committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We um, had a subcommittee meeting and it will not surprise you that we focused primarily on safety concerns and housing. Uh, talked uh, a little bit about what our schedule will be for subcommittee meetings for the rest of this year. And uh, again, um, uh, great uh, confidence in uh, President Harris and his staff um, as it relates to uh, the universities um, addressing safety and, and, and uh, the opening of housing in the fall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Regent Shirley, would you like to report on finance, audit, and risk? I would, thank you. The finance, audit, and risk committee met by phone call last week. Um, from, uh, uh, from the regents, myself, Regent Stevenson, and Regent Holloway were, were present. We met primarily to discuss the financial and audit reports for OU and the Health Sciences Center. Um, we will do that in between regents meetings on an ongoing basis. Ken Rowe gave an update on the OU financial situation, both for the fiscal year um, as well as projections and assumptions for fiscal year 21. Um, given the highly fluid situation and uh, the only thing I think that we can say with, with certainty is that President Harris, our CFO Ken Rowe, and their staffs are working um, and have been working day and night to stay on top of, of, of things and fold emerging information into the information that, that we currently have so that they can, can come up with, with up-to-date financial projections. Based on what we know today and despite the losses that, that we may be projecting, OU's financial situation is absolutely strong enough to not only endure this situation, but to make forward strides. Charles Wright, our auditor, gave the report for the internal audit department. The audit department continues their important work of ensuring the integrity of procedures. We received an overview of the fiscal year 2020 audit plan and understanding the focus and resolving issues on a timely basis. No serious issues were noted. Charles also stated that at our next meeting, the committee will receive a transitional audit plan and will thereafter get a formal 2021 audit plan once the internal audit team can engage the OU system leadership around the risk associated with the strategic plan. It's clear that Charles and his team are operating at a highly professional level to the great benefit of the entire OU system. And that's my report, Chairman. Thank you, Regent Shirley. Um, Regent Colley. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You'll be reporting on Health and Clinical Enterprise Committee. Yes. A significant goal of the university is to develop a highly integrated academic health center at the Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. A meeting was held in March, attended by Chairman Pearson and Mr. Harris and others, along with uh, representatives of uh, UHAT and OU Med. Um, work was started on May the 7th. Uh, Regent Holloway and myself met with members of the university, members of the University Hospital Authority Trust, which is our hospital partner, to discuss and review the initial draft of a term sheet that had been worked on among the relevant parties. We felt like very significant progress has been accomplished to date. Uh, also involved in that meeting was a representative from a consulting firm known as ECG, which specializes in structuring academic health centers, integrated academic health centers. And we also reviewed and considered uh, the university entering into uh, and sharing the costs of that consultant with, uh, with the trust. And uh, at the conclusion of the meeting, there's a desire to do some final review, possibly, um, possibly a change or two, but we don't anticipate many at all. So um, we recommend, we're gonna recommend, probably have to review it again, but we'll consider recommending to this board the approval of the term sheet, which then, that's not the approval of agreement, Gary, we're just moving forward in the process. But I think my report would be there is progress being had. I think it's positive progress and there will be further reports forthcoming. Okay. Thank you, Regent Call. Any comments or questions for open session? Is there a report from Academic Affairs and Research Committee at this point, Regent? No. Okay, good. I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, the Administrative and Operations Committee did not have a formal meeting this week, but because of the events of the world in which we live now, we, we talk collectively or individually on a routine basis. I'm in constant communication with the President about the decisions that he and his staff are making. Uh, we will have a committee meeting here before the end of May. Um, I suspect that it will be a recap of what we do every week anyway. So nothing special there other than to say that we are on top of things and will stay that way. Any other reports from any other regions? All right, very good. May I have a motion for Executive session on items 20 and 21 on the agenda. I will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Let's take the roll. Keating. Regent Keating. Yes. Regent Colley. Aye. Regent Albert. Yes. Regent Shirley. Aye. Regent Stevenson. Aye. Regent Hall. Aye. All right. For those in the audience, did we circulate a call list or a text list, so we're good. Um, we'll do our best to be on time. Don't bet your life on it, though. <laughs> Thank you. Right. If we could bring our vice chairman and Interim president to order will begin. Um, it appears our crowd has grown, so welcome to everybody. Uh, can you hear adequately out there in the massed hinterlands? <laughs> Nobody can speak, but everybody can nod. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you to the press for your perseverance and patience today. Sorry that we're running about 30 minutes behind. Uh, but as you know, that's pretty good for us. Um, I will entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. Okay. Chris, Regent please. Regent Keating. Yes. Regent Colley. Aye. Regent Albert. Yes. Regent Shirley. Aye. Regent Stevenson. Aye. Regent Colley. Aye. 
Mr. Chairman, unanimous. Okay, let's record that as passing unanimously. We're officially out of executive session, which is item number 21 on the agenda. I'll call on Regent Shirley now to make some follow-up remarks about the finances of the university based upon our discussions uh, that began around 9.15 this morning. I just want to clear up some of the confusion that, that may have been brought about by reports about the university system's financial condition. COVID-19 has brought challenges across all aspects of life. Certainly, the OU system has not been immune to those challenges. However, I can say without hesitation or equivocation that OU is meeting the challenges. The Finance, Audit, and Risk Committee and the Board have now reviewed the financial situation at OU and HSC. The, members, the numbers change daily and sometimes hourly, but we are certain of two things. Number one, the team, the OU team, the HSC team, is monitoring and modeling the financial situation constantly and have plans for all scenarios. And number two, OU and HSC are in a stable financial situation such that we are in a position under all of the reasonable scenarios, worst to best, to not only survive, but move forward in the best interests of our students and our state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Regent Shirley. I'll next call on Interim President Perez to comment on a couple of follow-up matters regarding um, safety of all concerned here at OU. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we look at, um, we were among the first to announce that we would be opening up uh, this fall for in-person classes. I uh, wanted to report, uh, just a follow-on report, there's certainly a lot more detail that will follow uh, in communications that will start over the course of the next several days, but uh, the campaign that we have is to ensure um, the safety of this campus and, of course, the safety of our students and faculty and staff and guests that will be here uh, through the leadership of the operations team, uh, Eric Conrad and many others. Uh, we're making a major investment in, uh, in everything from air purifiers to uh, hand sanitation to restructuring the way classes are organized to creating space between classes to allow for additional cleaning. Uh, instead of there being 10 minutes between classes, there'd be 30 minutes between classes to allow for uh, both social distancing and additional cleaning. Uh, there are some 20, uh, almost 2,900 bathroom fixtures across campus that are all being changed out to ensure they're all touchless uh, to allow for uh, the highest level of sanitation and cleanliness. Uh, so as we as we move towards reopening this fall, I can assure you we're doing it in a way and with the team that's working every day uh, to ensure that we're spending the resources, time, and energy uh, to make sure we are in the very first instance safe. Thank you. Would you also make a brief comment uh, about enrollment for the fall? Yeah, enrollment. Uh, yesterday I spoke about the national trends. <laughs> Uh, and the uh, predictions on the impact on the size of entering classes, the freshman classes, uh, in the wake of COVID. And uh, the national press is carrying uh, that the average institution will be down some 15% in the numbers of students that are on campus. I also spoke about uh, the large number of institutions, especially private liberal arts institutions, uh, that simply won't make it. Uh, some predict 20% over the course of this next year of the 1,000 liberal arts uh, private institutions. Uh, we have been doing some extraordinary work. The teams working on recruiting uh, have done an extraordinary job. Uh, they've gone to great lengths. Jeff Bolonic, his team, uh, Kyle Harper, all the folks working on recruiting admissions, the deans themselves. Uh, and right now, we're trending uh, uh, down only about 1% uh, right now uh, is the number. Uh, Kyle, I think you're over there to confirm that. Down around 1% right now and working to get that number up from there. So a lot of great work going into it. Uh, proud of, uh, of the entire Sooner family and the direction that we're heading right now. Thank you, Interim President. We'll move to the uh, final matter on our agenda for this meeting. It's item number 20. Do I have a motion relative to that? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion 
and the motion is as follows. With respect to agenda item 20, I move the board remove the title interim and appoint Joe Harris Jr. as president of the University of Oklahoma, effective immediately at the current rate of pay and authorize the chairman of the board with the assistance of the general counsel to finalize additional contractual terms as may be typical for agreements of this type. I second the motion. Do I have a second? You do. All right, we'll be in discussion and I'm gonna exercise chairman's prerogative uh, to make the first remarks, but each regent will then be asked to make whatever remarks he or she feels appropriate. I have a few things to say, so please settle in. Um, it was October of 2017 when the University of Oklahoma began the search for its 14th president. That search included students, faculty, staff, thank you, alumni, and the general public. Received were over 100 applications and nominations. Over the next six months, a very dedicated committee of different constituencies uh, narrowed that down to seven and submitted them to the then Board of Regents. The Board of Regents narrowed that down to three for further consideration. Uh, interim President Harris was one of those three. As we all know, ultimately, uh, Jim Gallagher was chosen as president and served us very well for the next 12 months. He resigned in May of 2019 and the regents were faced with a question of whether to immediately appoint a permanent president or an interim as a successor. And this was the second time this process began in 18 months. The regents asked Joe to come in to a late night, early morning meeting uh, that none of us will ever forget, um, and told him that he had sufficient support to be named the 15th president of the University of Oklahoma. And he was asked if he wanted to do so and was willing to do so. And a remarkable thing then happened. In what I would describe as a completely unvarnished display of genuine love and loyalty to the University of Oklahoma and an equally unvarnished display of personal character, Joe said he still wants to lead the university, but he was not willing to do so at that time. To his own detriment, because he had the job if he wanted it, he told the regents that he thought it was better for the university and all of its constituency that he be named the interim president rather than the permanent president. I'll leave my personal comments about that decision for later. Um, but his mind was clear and his thoughts were pure. And this is what he said. The University of Oklahoma has had more than enough intrigue and dr drama over the last few years. He thought the university needed a, a period of calm and he wanted the opportunity as interim to bring harmony and direction to the university. He also wanted the support of not a majority of the regents but all of the regents and he wanted that support to be based upon merit not timing. So he asked a single thing. He asked actually two to be named interim and to be giving sufficient time to allow these things that he desired to happen. Um, many of you all have questioned, where in the world did this 15 month thing come from? That's where it came from. Joe knew he was up to the challenge and he was unafraid to leave the sure thing he had as the dean of the law school in favor of doing the right thing by the university. So today, when the regents met, we felt that we were at the end of a very open, a very transparent 12-month interview of interim President Harris. Some people could argue that we're at the end of a 23-year 
interview, and they would be correct about that also. The regents had to ask themselves today whether the future president or the president that's right for the future of Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma, sits right in front of us, right under our nose, while we may be looking elsewhere. In answering that question today, and over the last 12 months, the Board of Regents considered the opinions of faculty, staff, students, alumni, the public, government officials, and even peer institutions. I want to emphasize this was the second full vetting of interim President Harris in 30 months. We considered the need for stability at the University of Oklahoma. We considered Joe's in-depth knowledge of the University of Oklahoma, his familiarity with the people of the state and the Sooner Nation, wherever they may be worldwide. We analyzed his commitment to academics, including research. We thought greatly about his accomplishments as dean of the OU College of Law, which were nothing but stunning. We thought of the steady hand that he's provided us over the last 12 months, and especially in the last two months. And we also in, uh, considered, importantly, his willingness to take constructive criticism and advice and respond to both. There were many, many, many other considerations. We did not give this short shrift. We also weighed, and this is important, we also weighed the merits and the need for a national search. And let's just get it right on the table. We know there's going to be some people that are going to say, we didn't do this right because we didn't do a national search. Well, we considered that, and we considered it very carefully. In so doing, we educated ourselves on the national success of national searches, especially in terms of What's the longevity of somebody coming from out of state to a new institution and their tenure before they leave to, for the next institution? We considered today the history of OU as it relates to national searches and how many presidents have come and gone in less than five years as a result of that. And the reality when we talk about open and transparent is when you conduct a national search, you get highly qualified candidates to come in for sure. And the regents spend a few hours with them, maybe a day or two. Faculty spend some time with them. Students spend some time with them. But at the end of the day, any one individual might have spent two to three hours with a person who they perhaps didn't know beforehand. And if you hire that person, which is not improper, but if you hire that person, then you have to believe in the notion of hope. We do not believe in, as the Board of Regents, that at this point in time in the history of the University of Oklahoma, with Joe sitting right in front of us, that hope is the strategy that will take us into the future and a future of excellence. It was never lost on us from a historical standpoint that probably our most storied president in OU history was appointed full president in 1943. His name was George Lane Cross. He also was the longest serving president in OU's history. And his first 12 months, or his 12 months prior to becoming president were as interim president. So, We think that we've put a lot of thought into this. We've considered all perspectives. We haven't taken this lightly. If we said it once today, we said it a dozen times, this is the most important decision we can make at OU. Any criticisms about that, the level of seriousness by which we take this will be wrong. We could not have taken it more seriously. I'll make some personal comments after the vote, if I may, but before I go any further, I would like to have Vice Chairman Keating uh, speak. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll postscript you very briefly. Um, I was asked some time ago, what is the most important mark of leadership when you're going to select somebody to be a leader, whether it's corporate leader, political leader, whatever it may be? And I said, the first credential is goodness. You should be a person of high moral character. Secondly, in my judgment, maybe even firstly, humility. Joe Harris is a humble person. Uh, he has an extraordinary background, Phi Beta Kappa in college, and all of us know what his record has been as counsel to this university uh, and as dean of the law school. He did a superb job, and he has done, as the chairman said, a wonderful job on an interim basis for us as OU alums. I know Phil Albert and I are the only two uh, alums of the Regents Committee just a few, two short years ago that selected um, our immediate past president. At that time, as the chairman noted, uh, Joe Harris was a finalist. And who presented us this list of 100 winnowed to seven? Um, the faculty, the students, and outside interested significant OU figures, alums, and others. So the background, the check, the vetting was extensive uh, at that time, just a few short months ago. In that interim, Joe has done a masterful job with humility and grace and goodwill and humility and competency and humility and excellence. In my judgment, he will be a wonderful president for the University of Oklahoma. He loves the state. He loves Oklahoma. And I couldn't be more proud and more happy as a member of the Sooner Nation. My philosophy of leadership is that leaders are chosen for a moment in time. And in the last year, we have been through many moments throughout the OU system. And over and over again, Joe Harris has risen to the challenge and not just satisfied that moment in time, but move the university and the whole system forward. It was in light of that knowledge and knowing his character that I was able to, I am able to unanimously support Joe's candidacy as the president of OU. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I certainly echo all of the comments that have been made, and yours were certainly very complete. Uh, Joe Harris demonstrated leadership, demonstrated vision, the right guy at the right time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Regent Colley. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would just say that uh, I'm a short-termer on this board, but it's enormously proud time for me to be a part of this board that's done made this election because I think we have elected an outstanding candidate to become the president of our university. As I have interacted with Joe, I've actually known Joe a long time, but I've worked with him a lot in the last few months. He's articulate, he's extremely bright, and has an incredible grasp of the understanding of the university. And most importantly, I think Joe understands that success for the University of Oklahoma means success for all of the constituent parts. And he has a real sensitivity for all of those parts and their well-being, and he will serve our university well. Thank you. Regent Stevenson. Uh, thank you. And when I, um, when I think about Joe and, and uh, working with him over the past year, when you think about OU, we're really all about the students. And one thing I've seen over and over and over again is that the students respect, admire, and like Joe. And that goes a long, long way in my book. Uh, the second piece, um, as uh, Regent uh, Natalie mentioned, is um, just the financial stability that Joe has led us through during some really difficult times. Um, things could be very, very different. And because of Joe's leadership, we're in a really 
strong, and encouraging position during the most, one of the most difficult times, I'm sure, in our history. Um, the other piece I really appreciate is how hard Joe and his leadership team are recruiting right now during, again, a challenging time, working to make this the university that all Oklahomans uh, should and could and want to be a part of, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but the, maybe the most important piece is when I think about what we want OU to be and the brand we want to represent and how we truly want to be that light, that thing, that institution that all Oklahomans can look up to, I think Joe is the person to lead us there and really proud to partner with him going forward. Thank you. Regent Holloway. I was asked in my Senate confirmation hearing what I believe were the most significant issues facing the University of Oklahoma. And my response to that question was stability and good stewardship. And when I think about what Joe has accomplished over the last year, I believe that he is bringing and will continue to bring both of those things to the university. Joe, you have my full and unwavering support, and we will be there with you every step of the way. Congratulations. Let's have a roll call vote, please. Regent Keating? Yes. Regent Polly? Aye. Regent Albert? Yes. Regent Shirley? Aye. Regent Stevenson? Aye. Regent Holloway? Aye. Mr. Chairman, unanimous consent. I don't get to vote on this. Yes, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think I'll vote in favor of this also. Uh, thank you. I'd like to make a couple of comments on behalf of the board. Um, Joe, we're proud. We're excited. We want to watch you grow. We're going to help you grow. Um, we always want you to keep a steadfast eye on what the right thing, not the popular thing is. Always have that as your guiding star. To those who are gathered in the Sooner Nation as a whole, even before our current times of uh, COVID pandemic, higher education was deep into a period of fundamental disruption. From a personal standpoint, I've been involved in a business, the media business, that has undergone fundamental disruption. So I have a thorough understanding of what it does. And what it does is it has a hunger to destroy all that we know and the traditions that we cherish in a voracious and unsympathetic way. No one person, no president can stand up against this by himself or herself. It takes all of us. So on behalf of the Board of Regents, I'll say this. We have a choice. We can get behind this new president and make a positive difference in the lives of many, many people at all levels or we can hold on to insignificant differences, hold on to disagreements from the past, or we can continue to push personal agendas to our detriment. And the disruptors will rejoice on the latter. As, I, as the chair of the Board of Regents, I encourage everyone in the Sooner Nation to get behind Joe Harris as the 15th president and focus on the future. Because at the end of the day, the University of Oklahoma is larger than any one of us. We're just temporary stewards of this 130-year-old institution, and we have a duty to it the same way it has a duty to us. So I would hope this would mark the point where a new level of collaboration, teamwork, spirit, commitment, and pride begins at the University of Oklahoma. Joe, I hope that you will foster that every day at every turn. So on behalf of the Board of Regents, well done, congratulations. I hope, we hope you have a long and distinguished career supported by all of us. We look forward to working with you. And if you promise to be brief, we'll let you speak. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so to the board, uh, I'm overwhelmed by the ability to work with you all. It, it, you've, this board has changed so much in the last several years, and this board has taken on so much. Uh, this is true selfless service. Uh, 
and each of the regents here are public servants. Some with a longer history of public service than others, Governor. Um, but it truly is. Uh, this is not some honorific job that you come into, and it's come with lots of strains, and to a person, every region in here is spectacular. And I'm humbled and honored to work with you. And it gets to the point about how, how do we gain progress? And it, we all know it's not naming somebody to a role and giving somebody a title. Um, what it takes is is an understanding of the sacred mission that we have. And what it takes is a governing board that's engaged in governance and in a respectful relationship with the president who has a respectful relationship and with the president who understands the role of the students, our obligation to those students, who understands the role of the faculty and how you work with the faculty, that understand the staff, what they do, the alumni, all of those that make this place so special. My job is not to carry a title. It is to understand what our purpose is and to serve, to serve as a part of this, to serve as a part of something that is so remarkable in our society. I, I talk about the sacred mission, and it is. This is not just an enterprise. Right? We serve the next generation of students and transmit knowledge. We create knowledge. We engage in creative activity. We serve society. What happens here, and we engage in patient care at the highest level, infused by research. What happens here is not ordinary, and what happens here matters. And I'm, I will always be humbled because I understand exactly what my limitations are and how many they are, and I understand how the place actually operates and works, and every person here who's worked with me knows exactly um, why I should be humble. I take this very seriously. I will give it everything I have. And when I look um, out, and thank goodness you all voted in favor of me because some family showed up, and that would have been really <laughs> awkward uh, and almost unfixable. Um, the key word was brief. Right? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up with this, and that is I'm so thankful all my family is here uh, mom, dad, sisters, brothers-in-laws, Ashley, my partner, um, my friends, even even Bob Stoops and a federal judge and Matt McMillan showed up. What I would say is this, and that is the story of what we're engaged in, in my individual story, it is worth telling in a very brief fashion. My father is here in the front row. My mom and dad are my heroes. And my father's in the front row with a tie on, and he's not Trey Savage. <laughs> my, dad, um, my dad proves why a great, public, accessible flagship university matters. My father's dad came over. His parents sent him on a boat from Lebanon to find a better life. They sent him here and he found in the U.S., he came to Oklahoma because of the oil fields. And my grandfather never learned to read or write. He had nine children, none of whom went past high school except for my father. And my dad, because of the University of Oklahoma, was able to go to college and then on to medical school, both at OU, and provide a life for his family and to change lives. And that story is my story. But that story is all of our story. That is the story of the University of Oklahoma. That is a story of yesterday. That is a story of today. And the story of tomorrow. And to be a great university, to be a truly great university, those are the stories we have to continue to allow to occur over time. And so I accept it with pride, with humility, and with obligation. Thank you. Before my tenure as chair is 
soon over. I'm hoping to surprise Joe, President Harris. Not interim. Not interim, which is so disappointing. Um, surprising to a degree where he says, I'm rendered speechless, and I'm going to take him up on it. Um, I do see the Harris family, Dr. Harris and his wife and the, the children here. Um, you should be very proud. We're very proud uh, for us and for you. Uh, your son and your dad has a legitimate job now, and he's going to do good and try to make, make something of himself and the university in the process. Uh, Joe, we couldn't be more proud of you. Thanks for everybody in attendance. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Let's do our roll call. Uh, Regent Keating. Yes. Regent Call. Aye. Regent Nalbert. Yes. Regent Shirley. Aye. Regent Keating. Yes. Regent Hall. Aye. Adjourned. Hey, Gary, sign this for him, would you?